Hey everyone. So how are you doing today? You know, I pray that all of you are doing good. You know, I know it's a season, the flu season that is. COVID's still out there and there's all those normal injuries and illnesses and things that just don't go right for us that bring us down. But do you know what? Even if these things get us down, we know that in this day and age, a lot of injuries and common illnesses can be treated with things that we find around the house in our first aid kits or with a trip to the doctor. Well, in our Bible study today, we will hear about 10 men who needed healing and they called out to Jesus. And today we're gonna look to see what did Jesus do? What did Jesus say? How did he handle these people that were calling out to him? So when, we, when you hear about the people in our Bible story today, I want you to think about this big picture question. Why did God create people? Do you have any idea? Okay, I'm, I'm making it easy for you. It's right there on the screen. Why did God create people? God created people, created people to worship him, to love him, and to show his glory. Let's look at that again. God created people to worship him, to love him, and to show his glory. So for some pretty big things to think about. And that's some pretty cool stuff too. Don't you think? I think so. So Jesus's ministry here on earth, it was brief. It was about three years. He encountered many people during this time. He traveled and he taught the truth about God and his kingdom. Throughout his teachings and his miracles, Jesus revealed that he is the son of God in human form, living among God's people bringing salvation to sinners like us. Jesus healed many people. Today's Bible story is called Jesus Healed 10 Men. These men had serious skin disease that kept them away from other people. So let's find out what happened. Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem when he entered a village. Ten men cried out to him, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. The men did not come close to Jesus because they had a skin disease called leprosy. Jesus saw them and said, Go and show yourselves to the priest. Jesus wanted the men to follow the law God had given to Moses. The law said, a person who had a skin disease had to go to a priest to be examined when the disease was gone. The priest and the person had to follow certain rules so the person could live a normal life among people again. As they went, the 10 men were miraculously healed. One of the men, seeing that he was healed, went back to Jesus. He praised God and fell face down at Jesus' feet, thanking him over and over. This man was a Samaritan. Jesus asked the man, weren't 10 men cleansed? Where are the others? Only this man, a foreigner, had returned to give thanks and praise to God. Jesus told him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has saved you. Jesus healed the 10 men who cried out to him. The one who had faith was saved. When we trust in Jesus by faith, he heals us from something greater than a disease. He saves us from our sins. We can give him thanks and worship him for making us new. So imagine what life was like for those 10 men with leprosy. The Jewish law said that their skin disease made them unclean. They had to follow rules about staying away from other people. And that's why they didn't get too close to Jesus 
They stood at his distance to, and called out to him. Well, what did the men say to Jesus? If we read Luke 17, 13, we can see that the men cried out for mercy. They didn't ask Jesus for money or food. They wanted Jesus to have compassion on them and to heal them. Jesus told them to go to the priests. And that was unusual because that's what they're supposed to do after they've been healed. But as they went, they were healed. When one of the men realized that he was healed, what did he do? Well, as we look in Luke 17, 15 through 16, we see that the man returned to Jesus. He understood that the healing came from him, from Jesus. He praised God and honored him. Jesus healed 10 men and one was saved. God was merciful and good. The man humbly fell down at Jesus's feet and thanked him over and over again. Jesus healed the 10 men who cried out to him. The one who saved, the one who had faith though was saved. When we trust Jesus by faith, he heals us from something greater than a disease. He saves us from our sins. We can give him thanks and worship him for making us new. You know, and as we think about that, being thankful and giving praise, I wonder what kind of questions Pastor Brian might have today. Hi there, I'm Pastor Brian and it's time for questions from kids. Kylie from Casper, Wyoming asks, Why does God want our praise? Does he need us to praise him? That is a great question. Does God need us to praise him? Well, that I would say no, but I would be really hesitant about saying no point blank there. Let me, let me explain a little bit. Does God need us to praise him? No, he needs nothing. He does not need anything from us. He has existed for all of eternity. Even before he created people, he was getting along fine without us. So he doesn't need our praise from that perspective. However, he wants our praise and he calls on us to praise him for his glory and our good. Remember, everything God does is for those two reasons, for his glory and our good. When we praise God because of how good he is, how beautiful he is, how he has given us things, he's provided for us, when we praise him, we call attention to his glory. And God uses that so that we can let other people around us know how good God is. So our praise can be used as a tool to draw others to him. And so in that sense, he needs us to do this so that we can make him known to the world. But here's the beautiful part. God calls on us to praise him because it's for our good. It puts our hearts in the right place. It, it lets us live with gratitude, with joy. And God knows that when we praise him, it's for our good. So he calls on us to praise him for that reason as well. It's really a great thing when you stop and think about it. So does God need us to praise him? Not really, but it's a great gift that he's given us to call on us to praise him so that he can be glorified in, in others around us and so that he can be central in our lives, that we can recognize that he is the most important and he's beautiful and it changes our lives as we live for him. So here's a question back for you. What attribute or quality of God stirs up praise in you? Those are some great things to think about, you know, and some great things to put in your journal. What attributes, what qualities, what things that God does for you are you praising him for? Should you praise him for? Write them down. I think you'd be surprised to see all the things that you might have written down there, even if you didn't think you would. So that's what I think you should write down in your journal. What what do you think you need to be praising God for right now? So we praise God for a lot of things. And one of the things we praise him for is missionaries. We've been talking a lot about missionaries, haven't we? Well, we've been talking a lot about current missionaries, people that are doing things today. But did you know that there have been missionaries that have been doing things for hundreds, thousands of years, for a long, long time? Missionaries have been out there in the world spreading 
the word of God to people. And you know what, let's look at one of their stories. So a long time ago, there was a missionary named Amy Carmichael, and she felt God calling her to minister to people who were very poor. She lived among them, she taught them the Bible, and Amy wanted the people around her to have, to hear about their bodies, how their bodies could be healed, but also be healed by this, of the sin by trusting in Jesus as their savior. So let's watch a little bit about Amy and learn some more. There was once a little girl with brown eyes. She desperately wanted blue eyes, so she prayed and prayed for God to turn her brown eyes blue. God did not turn her eyes blue. He had bigger plans for this little girl and her brown eyes. The little girl's name was Amy Beatrice Carmichael. She was born in Ireland in 1867. Amy's father died when she was just a teenager. When he died, the family business suffered as well. Even though Amy's family had very little, it didn't stop her from helping others. She delivered food and she shared the gospel with others in need. Amy often went to places like the slums in her city. These weren't very nice places to live. Even though there were bugs, rats, and sickness everywhere, Amy loved the people there and knew they needed to hear about Jesus. Eventually, Amy got really sick and had to live with family and friends. During this time, she heard a famous missionary speak about the need for people around the world to hear the gospel. Amy realized God was asking her to be a missionary. In 1884, Amy left for India. She worked hard to learn the language and the culture. To better fit in, she learned to eat and prepare Indian dishes, and she also wore traditional Indian clothes. Because Amy did not have blue eyes, her brown eyes also helped her to be accepted by those around her. Amy soon realized there were many young girls and women who needed help in India. They were living on the streets or in unclean places like the slums back in her hometown. Amy provided a safe place for hundreds of these girls and women. She cared and loved for them. Many learned about the love of God for the very first time. Amy Carmichael loved and served the people of India for 55 years. She became Amma, the Indian word for mother, to many people there, and many others chose to follow Jesus through her work and testimony. Okay, so Amy Carmichael, she's kind of a cool lady, wasn't she? I mean, she didn't like her blue eyes at first. I bet there's something you can think about yourself, your eye color, your hair color, you know, you're, you don't feel like you're tall enough or, you know, maybe you're too tall that you're like, oh, I wish I could just change it. But just remember, God made you special. She didn't like her eye color, but it helped her later on fit in with the people that she was mission, being a missionary to and serving God at. So that thing you don't like about yourself today, just remember God could use that later on. So remember, you're special. God made you special. And we need to be happy with ourselves. So as we've seen, Jesus was really cool. The 10 men, they were sick and they they weren't getting any better, so they cried out to Jesus. Let's look at our verse for right now. It's kind of a long one, but long before Jesus was born, the prophet Isaiah wrote about a servant who would come from God. Isaiah 53, four to five. Yet he himself bore our sickness and he carried our pains but we in our turn regarded him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was pierced because of our rebellion, crushed because of our iniquities, punishment for our peace was on him and we are healed by his wounds. Remember, Isaiah wrote about this before Jesus, hundreds of years. And he said that his servant would bear our sickness and carry our pains. Jesus fulfilled these prophecies when he healed many, just like he healed those 10 men. 
In today's Bible story, Jesus healed 10 men, and one of them was saved. When we trust in Jesus by faith, he heals us from something greater than disease. He heals us from our sins. We can give him thanks, and we can worship him for making us new. The man who is healed in today's Bible story returned to Jesus to give glory to God. He praised him and honored him. And when we call out to God, he hears us. We can call out to him for mercy to rescue us from our sin, to help us in our times of need. Then we can thank him and live lives of gratitude for all that Jesus has done for us. Just like Amy Carmichael. She was able to live a life of gratitude for all that Jesus did for her, even though she didn't think about it, that, you know, he had done a lot for her at first. He did, he gave her an opportunity to make a huge impact on people. So this week, who are you gonna make an impact on? Think about that. Let's pray. Father, we confess that we do not always thank you for your goodness and care for us. Like the nine men who did not turn back to Jesus, we can be focused on your gifts to us and not on you who give it to us generously. Thank you for every good gift. Thank you for your word. In the Bible, we see the good news of what Jesus has done for us. Thank you for the gift of salvation through your son. Change our hearts and help us to live with gratitude. We love you. Amen. Now, you guys have a great week. I can't wait to talk with you all next week, and hopefully soon we can be together. Bye.